So let's talk about some characters in the house. Um, Nam Pham, he beat Mike Budnick, who was actually in, uh, in the WEC uh, and also in a professional inline skater. Nam Pham's one of those guys, man. When I, f I actually first, I I've, I've known about Nam Pham. I I've, you know, just in the jiu-jitsu community, like, he's been around a long time. He's been training a long time, fighting a long time. I figured he'd have something to bring to the table. Um, you know, he kind of has a, a little bit better than a 500 record. I mean, he's lost a lot of his more recent fights, so I didn't really know um, how well he would do against the, the group of guys that was there, because we did have a really solid group of guys. And and Budnick, like you said, he's, he, he went 2-2 two and two in the WEC. I mean, he's, he's, got, he's well rounded. He's got some good wrestling. I actually figured that Budnick was going to have the advantage on the ground. Um, I I didn't know anything about Nam's hands, and apparently he's, you know, a decent boxer. You know, at, le at least got some power. But um, you know, when he showed it, he hit him and he dropped him. But uh, you know, he's 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 small for you know he he's more more natural 45 pound fighter. So you know, I was I was interested to see how he was going to do against some other big guys. What are your thoughts on uh, Bruce Leroy? Um, I, I just felt like he was, you know, immature in a, in a lot of ways. I mean, that that was a self nickname. He nicknamed himself Bruce Lee Roy, and he totally ran with it. I mean, and you know, in hindsight, right now, it's gonna get him a lot of airtime, you know, and you know, maybe he he wins in that in that situation, but you know, that's not what it's like, you know, for me. I don't, I didn't go in there to try to, you know, put on an act for the camera, and and he did. I mean, granted, he can fight, and he showed it in his first fight, but. Um, you know, it's just that it just seemed he was too focused on on putting this image in front of Dana, and I don't really know why Dana bought into it. I mean, you saw it on the episode. Oh, I love this kid. I love this kid. But you know, I don't think you know. I don't think by the t the end of the time we were there, Dana liked it as much. You know, it was funny for the first couple of minutes. It's like one of those things where it gets old real fast. Cody McKenzie. Uh he had an interesting guillotine. George even talked about it. About you know he actually predicted that he would would win by a guillotine. Uh, what do you think about his particular fight? I didn't know what to expect. You know the way he looks and whatnot. Just you know you, judging a book by his cover. I didn't think he was gonna be as tough as he was. And then one of the coaches were like, "Hey, this guy's like 12 and 0 with 10 guillotines." I was like, "Oh, all right." You know, so you, you get the 12 and 0 for a reason. You know, it's it's not easy to get that many wins, just you know not being that good. Mm -hmm. So I figured he had something for us. Absolutely. And another guy that was very impressive in his debut was Michael Johnson. Andy, let's talk about Michael a little bit. I mean, uh, we saw his fight, very tough, trappy kid. Uh, you know, even uh, one of the coaches even said that this guy's going to be a contender. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's just super athletic. You know, he's got that build. He's got that athleticism. I mean, he's got a decent wrestling pedigree. He, he wrestled in junior college. And, you know, he, wasn't, he was, was never a big-name wrestler or anything like that. But... Um, you know he was going to be, you know, tough because you, you could tell just from his fight with uh, Pablo that he, you know, he kept his posture high and he he, he rained down punches well. Everything had power on it, and uh, you know, you knew that if you were fighting him, you were gonna, you know, you were gonna be in for a fight. That's for sure. Uh, another guy that we saw successful was Kyle Watson, uh, trains at Hit Squad. Uh, you know, talk, tell me a little bit about Kyle uh, on his victory, and you know, I mean, he was he looked like a solid fighter. He's older. He's got a lot of fights. He was like 16 and 7 or something like that. He had a lot of fights, a lot of experience. Fought a lot of tough guys. Uh, he's a he's an instructor at Hit Squad, so I figured he would have great solid jiu-jitsu, and uh, he showed it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, I believe he's one of the older guys making it in the house, correct, Andy? He he was one of the older guys in the house. You know, and you could see the experience. You know, especially in that first fight. I mean, the kid he fought, Joe Duffy, was a scrappy dude. I think he had a pretty good record. But um, he made a big mistake with jumping guard on Kyle. I mean, that was just the worst thing you can do. I mean, Kyle's big, strong, and you know he's got really solid jujitsu. I think he's got like ten years of jujitsu experience. He's a brown belt or under megaton. He might be, you know close to like black belt level and and uh, that was a big mistake by by Duffy but Kyle's definitely you know he always keeps his composure and and uh, you know he's a, he's definitely a good competitor there's actually a lot of East Coast MMA in this house another guy that's from the East Coast uh, like you guys obviously is Mark Stevens mm -hmm. uh, from New York uh, Buffalo you know there's some background there with Koss he apparently was uh, at Buffalo when Koss was coaching there yeah. uh, tell me about his fight I, I, I was interested to see if he would try to shoot you know if he would try to you know stand and bang with him or, or try to take him down and, and deal with that guard that um, you know that TJ O'Brien has but you know it didn't last long enough for us to really find out I think it was just you know they were feeling each other out with that first kick he just came over the top and clipped him and that was it was a wrap after that Aaron Wilkinson trains at Wolf Slayer. Uh, a lot of the guys that weren't, you know, from the UK are not known for their ground game. He actually had a pretty decent ground game. Uh, were, you know, were, were people surprised at all when they saw when they saw him actually, you know, work the ground pretty well? He was impressive to me. Just the the, the heart of a lion. The kid just there was no quitting him. Just go go go. No matter what, you know, to put him to sleep, you might have had to kill him. He uh, kid was tough, man.
Another guy who made the team, uh, Savak, he also won. Uh, talk about talk about that matchup. Savak um, fought JJ Ambrose out of AK. Real tough guy. Um, he's got a, got a lot of fights behind him. Savak just took him down, controlled him, which uh, Savak and um, Saka were both like world class judo competitors. They both competed at judo worlds for years and years and years from Gokor's gym out there in LA. And uh, you know those guys were both tough, real tough. Yeah, it was actually pretty interesting to see the different nationalities. But uh, the upset, that was actually an upset because, uh, you know, J.J. Ambrose, an AKA guy, mm -hmm. you know, you have a cost check there. You figure he's going to be, you know, an ace in the hole for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turned out not to be true. Yeah, no, I don't think that they expected that to come from Savak. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, you get an Armenian guy out of that, out of Cairo and Manny's gym. I mean, you know, you're getting a tough guy, and I mean, he was big and strong, and you know, they knew they were giving JJ a tough guy, but I just don't think that they thought he had the technique to uh, beat JJ. You know, I figured, I think they thought that JJ would be able to just take him down and, and control him on the ground with his wrestling. Um, but uh, you know, Savak just he actually Savak took him down once, and um, JJ had him in a deep deep Kimura from the bottom, yeah. like real deep in Savak, man, he would not tap, he, mm -hmm. you know, he, I think he said that he was going to let it break if it, you know, if it, if it went to it, you know, he's got that mentality, he's, he's crazy, and um, he, you know, he stuck it out, and then after that, it was just all just, you know, not a super exciting fight, but, but again, you know, just a beat down, you know, just constantly picking him up, putting him down, picking him up, putting him down. Uh all right, so you guys made the house. Uh, so at this point, you know, Dana's talking to you guys about, you know, getting in the house. Now here comes the, work, you know, the work. What do you guys? Yeah, at that point, what do you guys? Is it kind of like just like a, an adrenaline rush where you're like, okay, it's it, I'm it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, at that point, it was like, it was like, you know, the fight was behind you. You most of us weren't really thinking about the next fight yet. You know, we were just, you know, we just wanted to move into the house, eat some some good food, and and just have a good time that night. I mean. You know, we all, almost everybody had probably done a six to eight week camp, you know, just getting ready to get onto the show. And, you know, I, I can't imagine, you know, working that hard and, you know, taking that plane ride home. So, well, you know, all of us that got into the house were just super excited to just get move in and, and you know, have some fun. Well, that's pretty much it for week one uh, of the tough, re the tough 12 recap. So we'll be back next week uh, with Jeff Lentz and Andy Main. So make sure to tune in, MMA.Hards.com.